Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Bonjour and dzień dobry. My name is Christina Quino, Director of Communications and Public Affairs at the Royal Canadian Mint in Ottawa, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the unveiling of two very special collector coins today. The Mint is very proud to be at the John Paul II Polish Cultural Centre to commemorate the canonization of Pope John Paul II, which will take place on April 27th. But before we begin today, I would like to invite Father Janusz Blazejek to lead us in a prayer. Father? Thank you. Oh God, you chose that John Paul II to proclaim the universal call to holiness and apostolate in the Church. Pour out your blessings upon all of us gathered here this morning as we honour the Holy Father John Paul II by unveiling the gold and silver coins in his memory. Grant that all who contemplate his life may be encouraged to carry out their daily work faithfully in the spirit of Christ and to serve the work of redemption with burning love. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. So prior to the unveiling of the coins, the following speakers will join me at the podium today. Simon Kamel, Acting Vice President of Corporate Legal Affairs at the Royal Canadian Mint. Ladislaw Lizon, Member of Parliament for Mississauga East Cooksville. Teresa Berzowski, President of the Canadian Polish Congress. Janusz Blazejak, uh, Chairman of the Polish Priest Association of Eastern Canada, and Ted Fjarczak, President of the Maximilian Kolbe Foundation. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Simon Kamel from Women to say a few words. Thank you, Christine. Good morning, everyone. Uh, bonjour à tous. Jen dobry. I hope I said it correctly, but my Polish is a little rusty. <laughs> I want to thank uh, Member of Parliament, uh, Mr. Dizon, for uh, welcoming the Mint to Mississauga and to the heart of an important Canadian uh, Polish community to unveil special coins celebrating a special individual who is a giant of history, not just for Canada or Poland, but to the entire world. Ces deux pièces remarquables rendent hommage à une personne remarquable, un géant d'histoire pas seulement pour le Canada et la Pologne, mais pour le monde entier. The late pontiff uh, John Paul II is a man who transformed his role as the leader of the Roman Catholic Church into that of a universal messenger of peace and understanding, who reached out to untold millions of people of all faiths, backgrounds and nationalities during his 27-year tenure. Known as the Pilgrim Pope for having visited 129 countries by traveling more than a million kilometers during his pontificate, Canadians have also treasured him as Canada's Pope for being the first Holy Father to visit our country and for choosing to do so on three separate occasions and uh, very memorable occasions. As an organization uh, which is deeply committed to celebrating Canada's history, cultures, and values through coins, it is both timely and appropriate to honor John Paul II and his legacy with collector coins honoring his memory in the year of his canonization. Royal Canadian Mint employees are extremely proud of the innovative, finely crafted collector coins that they design, engineer, and produce to celebrate themes that tell the story of Canada and its experience. They are just justifiably proud to have used their exceptional skills to honor a great historical figure of our time which has touched the lives of millions of Canadians. Their role in immortalizing the contributions of John Paul II, Pope John Paul II, consists of two exceptional limited edition keepsakes. A $10 face value, 99.99% .99 pure silver coin, and a $25 face value coin crafted of 99.99% .99 pure gold. 
These coins will give thousands of admirers of precious and unique uh, of admirers of precious and unique way to remember the legacy of Pope John Paul II. Thank you. Merci. Jenkui. <laughs> Thank you, Simon. I would now like to ask Vladislav Lison, MP for Mississauga East Coatsville, to the podium. Thank you very much, Christine. Good morning, bonjour, and I guess Jane W. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm very honored to be here to represent our federal government, uh, and to be joined by my wife, Gosha, and welcome, everybody. Thank you for for coming here this morning, Trevor my father, and Mr. Camo, uh, also General of Poland, Teresa Berezowski, President of the Academy of Polish Congress, uh, Council uh, of uh, Well, uh, it is a great pleasure to welcome the Royal Canadian Mint to Mississauga and to the whole Pope John Paul II Polish Cultural Center to unveil special coins honoring the extraordinary life and legacy of a former pontiff who was a hero of Poland, a lifetime defender of the oppressed, and a humble but influential man whom Canadians will always remember as Canada's Pope. This year, the late Pope John Paul II is receiving the highest honor bestowed by the Roman Catholic Church, his canonization. He will become a saint. Regardless of one's creed of, or beliefs, this event is an occasion to reflect on the achievements of a man whose greatness was the product of unshakable faith in justice and humanity and the determination to live every day by one's principles. Canadians readily identify with the concept of justice, human rights, and equality. These principles are at the core of our values, and it is fitting that we should be honoring someone who was so instrumental in championing the same causes as Canada during a remarkable career as a church leader and a world leader. And uh, I would like to say a few words on a more personal note. Uh, I, as most of you know, was born, raised, and educated in Poland, and I went to the University of Krakow to study mining engineering. At that time, Cardinal Karol Wojtyla was the Archbishop of Krakow, and I had a chance to go the monthly mass that he used to hold for young people, he was always very closely young to you. His last, last visit to Canada was for the World Youth Day. And uh, he became Pope. And then he came for the first visit as a Pope to Poland in 1979, early summer. I already graduated, I was a young mining engineer, and this visit gave Polish people something that changed that part of the world and led to the fall of communism, led to the uh, birth of the first labor union in communist countries, Solidarity, and I was part of it. And it took a long time, it took a decade for the big changes, but eventually his inspiration, his strength, that he was able to give all of us led to the huge change that would not have been possible without his influence and his inspiration. Our government congratulates the Royal Canadian Mint for its efforts to remind Canadians of the importance of celebrating our belief in fundamental rights of a legendary historical figure who identified with our values and who, in becoming a close friend to Canada, 
touched the lives of millions of Canadians. I commend the Royal Canadian Mint for applying its ingenuity, its artistry and its craftsmanship to create unforgettable keepsakes in the memory of Pope John Paul II, where it's soon to be Saint Paul, uh, uh, John Paul II, which will serve to educate and inspire us for many generations to come. Thank you very much. Bonjour and welcome. Welcome to uh, the world that John Paul left behind. When John Paul first came into his papacy, he faced a world that didn't know the Pope. He was the first Pope to venture out into the world. He went out and introduced himself and brought Catholicism and faith and Christianity back to life in many, many cases. To Catholics, he revived the youth within its community. He initiated Catholic Youth Days and many youth within the Catholic community and outside of it rediscovered their faith and found that faith can play a role in their lives. To Poles, he was a man of honor and a hero. He brought about the change in Europe he established the fact that people have a right to freedom. His fight for freedom wasn't just for Poland, it was for everyone. It was for all peoples and his feeling of equality was something that we as Canadians really relate to. As a Canadian of Polish descent, I'm particularly proud that today we are unveiling these coins and want to thank the Royal Canadian Mint for having done this for not just Canadians of Polish descent, but Canadians throughout Canada. And all of us can appreciate the fact that John Paul had some meaning in all of our lives. Personally, I had a chance to recite some poetry when he was still the uh, Bishop of Kraków. He came to Canada and I was still a student and was invited to recite poetry. I injured my foot that day and actually had to have my partner sort of escort me up onto the stage and stand on one leg to say this poem in Polish. But uh, I do recall having met him. And many years later, when I was a young mother, um, my son uh, had a chance to go to Rome as one of the Polish scouts, <coughs> Cubs at that time. And actually, we have a beautiful photograph of John Paul shaking Zachary's hand. So it is a real keepsake within our family. Many Poles of Canadian descent have a connection or some feeling of connection to John Paul. But I think that today's event is going to bring about a memory for all of us here in Canada of the great man and the fact that he deserves the sainthood that is being bestowed on him. Thank you. Father Blazea, if you'd like to join us to say a few more words. Thank you. And I'm the second last speaker, so it's coming to the end. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great joy that a few weeks ago I have received the news that Royal Canadian Men decided to issue silver and gold collector coins on the occasion of the canonization of John Paul II. Believe me, when I heard about this event at all the Sunday masses of thousands of people last weekend, I announced this great joy. Today, this is a remarkable event not only for us, the Polish community in Canada, but also for all the Catholics. As Pope John Paul II courageously defended human freedom and human rights, he taught respect for others. He always paid attention to those most in need. Personally, I believe that his eyes saw with the courage of Mother Teresa, and he had the heart of St. Francis of Assisi. He 
He was the first pilgrim home, as it was mentioned a few minutes ago, who was not afraid to travel to remote and difficult places, as he was not afraid to address difficult questions and problems in the world. We are very proud today of this event, and on behalf of all the Catholics in Canada, Archdiocese of Toronto, and on behalf of all the Polish community, I wish to express my deepest gratitude to the Royal Canadian Mint for this wonderful gift to us. Thank you very much. Speaker today, uh, Ted Fjarczak, President of the Maximilian Kolbe Foundation. Thank you. Looks like we're hitting the three official languages, so I will say hello <laughs> as well. Um, welcome, distinguished guests and dignitaries. On behalf of the Maximilian Kolbe Foundation, the John Paul II Polish Cultural Center, and all their members and staff, I would like to thank the Royal Canadian Mint for selecting this location for this truly amazing event, the launch of the Pope John Paul II Gold and Silver Collective Coins. An event such as this unveiling is quite simply one of the reasons that the John Paul II Polish Cultural Center exists. The primary goal for the center is quite obviously the support and promotion of the Polish community. However, not only does this event show the pride that the Polish community has in Pope John Paul II, but it shows the pride that the Catholic community and the Canadian government have in Pope John Paul II as well. The John Paul II Polish Cultural Center began in 1981 when land was purchased by the Archdiocese of Toronto as a site for a new church. And with the land adjacent to him being, being vacant, an idea grew in the mind of Father Stanley Bonk, the first pastor of the parish. What if the Polish community were to purchase this land with the intention of building a community center a meeting place for all generations and a tribute to the Polish heritage. To this end, Father Stan called on several prominent members of the newly formed parish community and was able to secure their financial and moral support. These 15 individuals became the founding members of the Maximilian Kolbe Foundation, which was incorporated in 19, 1982. In December of that year, the land for the center was purchased. In October 1988, a delegation of foundation members traveled to Rome where the Holy Father, Pope John Paul II, gave permission for the use of his name and blessed the cornerstone for the building. In June of 1993, the blessing of the site and the sod turning ceremony marked the beginning of construction of the center. Finally, on September 17, 1994, the dream became a reality with the official opening of the John Paul II Polish Cultural Center. Since then, the center has become what it is meant to be, a meeting place for all generations, a home for treasures of the past, a place to enjoy and develop talents of the present, and a legacy for the future, and celebrating the legacy of Pope John Paul II. Clearly, this event today demonstrates that the John Paul II Polish Cultural Center is achieving its goal. Thank you. Thank you, Ted. Uh, now the moment we've all been waiting for, I'd ask our speakers to come up and unveil the coins, and I count to three, so we do it together. <laughs> One, two, three. I'm going to stay just for a couple minutes for photos. I'm going to assume that. very special coins. Um, the image is actually a reproduction of a photograph of Pope John Paul II offering Mass during his first visit to Canada 30 years ago. Mint Engravers has faithfully captured the power of the moment as the Pope raises the consecrated host at the elevation. You'll also 
also notice uh, you can come closer later and take your photographs. Um, but the word canonization is in three languages, as well as the signatures you can see there. Uh, these uh, coins were also unveiled at the Canadian Embassy in Poland earlier today, and as well as the second in Quebec that's happening today as well. Uh, the coins will be available for purchase as of April 1st on mint.ca and at select distributors, including uh, Canada Post. Um, so this concludes the formal part of our ceremony today. Please join us for some refreshments, and if media have any questions, um, I'm sure our speakers will be happy to answer them. Thank you very much.